Hey everyone, uh, this is Daniel. I, uh, I've been working on this Arduino project that you can see in the background for the last couple of months now. And I just was wanting to show it off, uh, maybe publish some more videos on YouTube of it. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I'm going to keep adding things, but uh, here's a video kind of just showing where it is right now. Alright, so what you're seeing here is kind of the standby mode. Uh, you can see it's just kind of doing a color wheel type effect. So I'm going to just walk up to it here, like I'm walking by in the hallway, and you can see it went white. Uh, and that's because we have a motion detector here, which is sending data back to the Arduino, and it goes white when people are walking by to kind of light up the hallway, because at night uh, this lights off. So it'll be kind of dark here, and this will light it up. Uh, we also have the bathroom right there. So I don't know, kind of just lights, lights it up when people go to the bathroom. I don't know, maybe I'm just inventing reasons. It's fun either way. So then the kind of hidden behavior here is the peephole, which has a capacitive sensor hooked up to it. So rather than spoil it, that's what it does. And as you can imagine with the lights off, this is pretty trippy. Uh, and yeah, that works just by just by touching it, like like anything, any way you touch it. And of course, if you touch it with something plastic, like this, this marker, it's not gonna work because it is a capacitor. sensor. Uh, the original plan was to have that hooked up to the doorknob, so when people grabbed the doorknob it did that, but that wasn't working because this door frame is made of metal and that was interfering with it once the door was closed. So, uh, actually if any, anyone here has an idea of how to fix that, anyone watching has an idea of how to fix that, uh, let me know in the comments because, uh, I don't know, I tried just putting tape around the door frame to try to insulate it, but that didn't work because it was still uh, it was still coupling to the door frame uh, through the insulation. So I don't know. But anyway, this works pretty well, and I'm not as interested in doing that anymore because I have some other ideas that I'm going to be implementing soon, and I will definitely be doing more videos on that. So you can hold this for as long as you want, and it'll keep going. So now let's take a look at how it works. All right. All right, so here's a look at the Arduino on the back side of the door. So this is actually a Wemos D1, which is not an Arduino, but it sort of looks like an Arduino. It can run Arduino code, but it has Wi-Fi built in, uh, which is super convenient. I'll, I'll show you why, how I'm using that later on. But then it's connected to these three transistors, and uh, these are what are driving the LED strip. Since it's a 12-volt LED strip, uh, and of course the Arduino can't output enough power to run all those LEDs. We have these three transistors that are switching the power. Uh, and currently I'm using TIP120 transistors, but I'm going to be upgrading to MOSFETs uh, after having a little discussion with someone online about why they're better. Uh, yeah, I'll be switching to MOSFETs in the future. Uh, then up here we have a level converter because this is for the I squared C bus. Since I have, uh, let's see, I have two devices connected via I squared C to this Arduino. One of them is a display, which is right here, and the other one is the capacitive sensor. And unfortunately, the display runs on five volts. The capacitive sensor is 3.3 volts. So you need a level shifter to switch the voltage of the I squared C uh, communication. Anyway, uh, down here, we just have power coming in. I have a capacitor across that to just smooth it a little more because I was uh, concerned about interference with the capacitive sensor it uh, triggering it when no one was touching it. So I don't know if that's actually helping, but I just threw it in there since I had it. Uh, let's see. Then one of these wires that's coming in, let's see, I think it's, uh, yeah, it's this one. This one is connecting the Arduino to the motion detector that's on the outside. So now let's get a look a little bit further back. All right, so here it is a little bit further back. Uh, you can see we have the display here, the Arduino and circuitry work down here. And this wire that runs up here, actually this, there's, there's five wires that run up to this, um, to the capacitive sensor, which is connected to the peephole right there. And over here, we have the wire that's going to the, uh, the motion detector. And uh, just some other stuff hanging off here. We have the power supply that's running it. But besides that, there's really no other circuitry. 
Let's take a look, cl closer look at the display. All right, so here's the display. It shows our room and room number. It shows how many people have walked by in this amount of time. So this is the motion detector count, basically. And then it shows the peephole touch count. And you can see if I touch the peephole, that's going to increment. It, incre it, it uh, refreshes the display every two seconds. And also, uh, it kind of functions as a doorbell. If someone holds down on the peephole, it'll just start blinking. And that'll get us our, get our attention our, in our peripheral vision. I look at the cameras having trouble focusing on it. That's kind of interesting. But yeah, so you can, it, it's kind of served, served its purpose, but hopefully in the future we're going to have some kind of uh, connection to our phones. When I say our, I'm talking about me and my roommate. Um, hopefully in the future we have a connection to our phones so it'll text us when someone's at the door. And to give you a preview of what I'm thinking of for that, I'll just show you this. Uh, this is what I'm working on right now. I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'm not going to get any closer, but that's what I'm working on adding to the door, if you can figure it out. Okay. So here's the last component of the door. We have this little website that is put up on the local network here on campus. Uh, don't try to get to this if you're not at this school, because you won't be able to load it. So this is basically showing the same information that is on the screen that I just showed you. And here at the top, we have the people touch count, which is self-explanatory. Number of people walked by, that's the same thing as the motion detector count on the display. In fact, I should probably rename it to the same thing, but whatever. Uh, night mode, I'll explain that in a moment. Uptime, that's just the number of the, sorry, the the length of time that the Arduino has been running for since it was since it was last reset or since the last time I uploaded code to it. In this case, I pushed a little update to it 23 hours and 47 minutes ago. Uh, and then the room number. So everything's self-explanatory here except for night mode. So let me take a moment to explain that. So every 10 minutes, the Arduino is querying this API online for the current time and it converts that to hours, and it, it says if it's after 11 p.m. or before 7 a.m., we activate night mode. And what that does is it turns off the backlight on the display in our room, since that would be annoying to try to sleep with. And it also uh, basically shuts off the LED strip entirely until someone walks by. And when someone walks by, it lights up kind of a dark red. And the reason I went for dark red is because Apparently red is the color that like doesn't interfere with your uh, like sleeping or tiredness or anything. Since so the I don't know, I don't know what the science is behind it, but red's a good color for people who are still half asleep. Since the hallway lights are usually turned off at that time, so we don't want to like kind of bewilder people with a big bright light that turns on as they walk by. So that's basically just what night mode does. It's nothing that special, but uh, yeah, it, it was kind of necessary to have this running 24-7 without any intervention to have like an automated night mode, and I think it's worked out pretty well. Anyway, that's my door project. Uh, I hope to do more videos on it in the future. I definitely have a lot of stuff coming down the pipeline as far as like new components. Uh, I showed you a little preview of that earlier. Uh, new components, uh, some improvements to existing setup. Eventually, uh, I want to switch everything over to a Raspberry Pi, and with that, I'll be able to add a lot of extra features. And I'm really looking forward to getting that in. Uh, it's going to take a lot of time to recode everything, though. But anyway, uh, subscribe if you want to see more of this. Thanks. All right, I just wanted to record one last quick section here with the lights off. It's currently after 11, so the door has gone into night mode. Uh, yeah, I was going to finish the video earlier, but for the sake of completeness, I just wanted to show you what it looks like when it's in night mode. So let's just walk down. You can see it, it turns off. Sorry, this video is going to be grainy because it's dark. But yeah, anyway, and as I walk by, it just lights up red. No big deal, kind of just a, a neat effect. Um, and in case you're wondering, if you come up and touch the, the peephole while it's in night mode, 
it just goes to a uh, kind of maximum brightness red. So, and then you let go and it goes dimmer again. So, yeah, that's the night mode. Okay, thanks for watching.